You produced two songs on me against the world, and it went number one while Tupac is in prison. Did he reach out to you? No, he didn't. He didn't. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story. I don't know if um too many people know about this. Me, A, B, and J, R. had came with our manager. We went to L.A. And it was a party we were supposed to go to. I'll never forget. It was on Rodeo Drive, right? Okay, so the way we um, pulled up to a light, my manager realized that the, the, the club that we had to go to was across the street. So what we needed to do was make a U-turn. But we got caught at a light. This black BMW or was it a Mercedes, but it was a black drop top. Pulled up next to my manager's uh, Cherokee Jeep truck. So I'm sitting in the back seat, and AB sitting in the back seat too. I think JR might have been in the front. I said, yo, yo, I looked over. It was Pac. I looked over, and I rolled the window down. I said, yo, Pac. I said, yo, what up, man? It's Mo B. He looks up, because he had to look up. He's in a drop top. He had to look up. He looked up. He said, and kept waiting for the light. The light turned, it changed, and he drove off. And that's when I said, you know what? Yeah, he, um, he don't want to deal with people from New York no more. He don't, probably don't, he don't. You got to understand this. He was in a position where he didn't know who to trust, man. He didn't know who to trust. And you know what? I wasn't mad. I understood that. I did. I understood it. You know, if I had stuff like that happen to me, and then somebody from back from that city, I see them. I don't know what he know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I just don't know. So I don't trust him. So it was a shocker. It shocked me, but I wasn't mad about it. I, I understood it. I was like, yeah, I get it, man. But it kind of hurt me, though, because he looked up. He looked me right at me, and I said, it's Mo B. And he didn't even say nothing. He just turned his head like that and kept looking with his hand on the wheel, looking straight ahead at the light, waiting for it to change. The light changed, and he jutted off. I'll never forget that. Within feet distance, me standing or just being close to Pac, that's the last time I saw him. The more I think about it, yeah, that's the last time I saw him. It's sad that that's the last way that I had to see him. Like, doubtful. Um, Just not sure. It hurt me that that was the last way that I had to see him like that. But again, like I said, I understood. Yeah, man, I can only imagine how you felt, man. I mean, you was working on Me Against the World. You produced two songs on Me Against the World, If I Die Tonight and Temptations. Then, you know, the whole Quad Studios incident happened. Then the incident happened with the female. Then Tupac, he goes to prison. He gets bailed out by Suge Knight. He joins the Duff Road. Then, you know, you see him in L.A. You say what's up. He ignores you. Because, you know, he couldn't trust anybody from New York because of the incident that happened at Quad Studios and the incident that happened with the female, Ayanna Jackson. So, you know, I understand where Tupac was coming from, man. But um, out of curiosity, man, how did you feel about Tupac joining Duff Row? When um, Pac got bailed out of jail, I was happy for him. I mean, I had no idea that he was on his way to death row, but my initial response, as long as he was out, I was happy for him. Who wants to be um, locked up, caged in a jail where you can't do anything and people telling you what to do? And you got a set amount of time you could be in there. I mean, put yourself in that place. When he came out, I was happy for him. I had no idea that death row was where he was heading. But even still, I was like, he's out. Go ahead, let him live. 
And then when he went to death row, I noticed that a lot of his um uh, subject matter, a lot of it changed. And not all of it, but most of it changed. And of course, he continued the attitude like that he had towards New York and everything. Again, the whole time I'm saying to myself, yo, I, I, I understand, I could dig it based upon what happened. You know, he still was trying to figure things out. So, Yeah, man. So while Tupac is in prison, me against the world, he comes out, he goes number one in the country. Tupac, he's the first rapper to go number one while in prison. How did that make you feel, my man, seeing all the success me against the real was getting? It was a mixed feeling, man. It was like conflicting, man, because I was happy for the success, you know, with the chart positions and how it was doing. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, he's, he's locked up and all this crazy stuff is happening. So I'm going to just say I was conflicted. Happy for the success, but at the same time hoping, you know what I mean, things would get better for him and that he would get out of jail. It was a funny feeling, man. With that conflicted kind of feeling, um, I was upset, I was hurt because I was looking forward to working with him more. You know, he had already talked about when we was in the studio in Unique. Um, and you know that thing about, um, I forgot what it was called, what he called it, where he had, he wanted to, um, he had, listen, that's right. When we was at Unique Studios one time, he told me about Nicest Move and what was it? Um, was it, uh, Smith and Wesson or somebody from Black Moon, um, uh, from um, Duck Down Records, he talked about that, that he wanted to, and he was like, and he told my group too, he's like, yo, I want y'all, he was getting ready to, like, create, I don't know if, I don't know if it's gonna be a production company, a label or whatever, with a bunch of rappers from the East Coast, this is before the so-called Death Row East thing and everything, oh man, the dude has so much plans, so, that's why I'm saying it, it hurt when he looked up at me like that and then just looked ahead and kept driving off because I said, yeah, we probably won't get to work together no more. That hurt. So much more work could have came out of that. And we talked about it too, but all that, that situation just messed it up. Yeah, I can only imagine, man. I know that had to be heartbreaking because y'all just came off a number one album with Me Against the World and you see him and everything and he ignores you. I know that had to be a little heartbreaking, man, to see that. Like I said, I'll continue to say it, though. I understood it, though. I understood. You know, you got to put yourself in, in the man place at the time. You know, you, you feel doubtful. You don't know who to trust around you. 